Hey guys, so I have Jake McKenzie here. Jake is kind of famous for having a world-class half guard game. And as I don't play a lot of half guard, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to have him go on here and give you guys kind of an overview of the basics. So even if you like open guard, which obviously I play a lot of open guard, sometimes the guy's gonna trap your leg and get you stuck in a, a tough position to get out of. So having a strong deep half game and half game can really not only attack, but give you a second chance at your open guard. Cool, and then I'm just gonna screw this and I'll edit that out. Oh. Look at that. I use one of these for jujitsu acts too. There you go. You should be experienced. I should be experienced. Yeah, cool. Not. Get your position. Okay. All right. Yep. So am I gonna talk first, or you gonna talk? You talk? Okay. Sweet. Go. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna go over like four basic positions that I think everybody should know in the half guard. Um, a lot of the attacks are going to be based off the underhook, so that's going to be super important, just getting really savvy at not letting the person underhook you and being able to create the underhook. That's where the majority of your attacks are going to come off of. Um, but like a couple basic attacking positions, I'll just go over some of the different concepts. So one thing that's really important is, you just lift this leg up here, John. This is kind of where I want to attack from. And it seems like a really weird spot because the thing is, is you, when's the guy ever going to do this? But the thing is, if John goes on the ground, a lot of times if the person's locked in the half guard, What's gonna happen is they're gonna have to stand this leg up first anyway, because I'm never gonna do this, you know, because he's gonna be able to tip me into this corner, get underneath me, et cetera. So like some of the schools of thought that I might do to try to like beat the half guard if I can't underhook him, if I'm gonna knee cut, I'm probably gonna lift this leg up to settle into my knee cut. If I'm gonna back step or go to the saddle, whether it's gi or no gi, I'm probably gonna have to lift this up and go to here. Same thing if I'm gonna disengage. So that's something that I'm gonna be looking for. This is really gonna open up attacks for like um, knee twist and deep half guard, which are my two favorite attacking series. So if I'm looking for the knee twist, it's really important that I scissor my legs and I wanna think about my stomach being like flush with the ground. So when I'm here, look, as I drop here, I wanna like chop here. And I wanna have this good pressure, almost like a ball and chain on this leg. Very important too, do you see how I keep this leg nice and um, like perpendicular to the ceiling? It's really important because now I have a really quick little pass off I can do. I'm obviously gonna be really tight. I'm gonna try to be ideally double underhook. So I'm gonna be here and here. I'm gonna switch and then I engage my hips. From here, you're gonna get into all of your dogfight attacks. Um, one thing I'd say is really important is really establishing a good grip with your left hand. So like the deeper you can get, the better. Ideally, where I try to put the fingers is like in this little loop right here because I can really glue my shoulder to them and it makes it easier for me to be more versatile in the position. Um, if John puts a wizard on me here, another thing that I think is really important is a lot of Jiu Jitsu people try to like wrestle up with the pants. If you get somebody that's a really good wrestler, that's gonna be really, really hard to do, you know? So if he keeps like a nice wide base here with his legs and really like hunkers down on that wizard, you know, and I uh, keep this knee on the ground here. That's okay. Uh, so I'll try to do this little pass off. This is very strong because the biggest thing is if we get up into that dog fight, if he has this base leg to lean into me a lot of times, it's gonna be very hard. So it gives me a huge advantage, you know, when I can like open his leg up a little bit, belly down, and then making sure that my leg comes up and swings into this space, you know? So I'd say if you want to start to play that knee twist, ideally some of those details are going to be um, really, really effective, you know? Making sure you go belly down and then making sure that you trap that leg and then I can swing up. So I'm looking for John to have this leg up initially. Here, don't hug onto this really tight. This is another thing. People will think they have to anchor their hand on something. They're like belt, lapel, my lapel. It's going to kill the rotation of my hips. So I want to, don't want to do that. So I want to kind of be nice and loose and just like as I drop into this space here, look, I'm just chopping and now look, I drop my knee like on the back of his knee hinge and I rotate my stomach down towards the floor, okay? Um, he's probably gonna open his base up and put a wizard on me. As he does that, remember, I need to keep good connection with my shoulder, have my arm here and now look, I try to pass this foot off, catch. If there's enough space here, I don't have to do anything with his legs. Sometimes if it's a little like tight, I'll push his knee out a little bit. Now I'm raising my hand like I'm lifting my hand in class, extending my right leg, going belly down, crowding and coming in. Um, what's gonna go hand in hand with this is what we were kind of talking about with a deep half guard too, is let's say that John has really good posture in his knee and he kind of bows his knee out this way a little bit. This is gonna be really hard if he's got good positioning for me to get a good bite on him, but it makes it really easy for me to have like access to the deep half guard because I only have to rotate my hips a little bit. And honestly, I'm not really changing his position that much. All I'm doing is extending his leg. So like I'll try to bite on the knee twist when I can't look. 
I hook over top of his Achilles. Now this is the biggest thing. People just try to like turn their knees this way. It really has to be like a pendulum motion. So I wanna go like extend, 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 swoop in, okay? Once I get into this position, a lot of people have different issues with either the underhook or the person dropping their knee. That's another thing too, is if he drops his knee right away, this automatically changes everything. So let's go over that first, oh, before the underhook. Um, I wanna think about ideally keeping like the front of my shoulder flush to the back of John's uh, hamstring. The reason why is because if he does the movement that he just did, this will be drops this knee down and sits back on me. Here, if my shoulder is out here, he's gonna sit on my hips, kill my hips, and then he's gonna be able to start twisting me and passing me, and it's just gonna be really bad for me. So when I'm here, just the fact of always thinking like, my shoulder is glued to him, even if I'm not grabbing him. If he does that movement here, this, it's much different. I'm in control now. I can just get up to my knees and pop out the back door if I need to, okay? Another thing that's gonna be really important is like using my hook and keeping a lot of tension on his adductor muscle. This is gonna really cut down his mobility on top, you know? So as I'm here, what we can start to lead this into is the reverse half guard because I wanna go over some of the positioning. It's my favorite spot to try to get into. Most of my guards try to lead into that half guard, um, but this is very important. So if John has his hands on the mat a lot of times, uh, one thing I can do is to defend the underhook too is look, I grab on the inside of the belt and keep this very nice and tight. Some of the lapel variations are really good too, but the problem with this situation, if I am gonna, I know this grip is very popular, but it becomes a little bit problematic sometimes if I'm here with John and he's able to get his hand into this space because I'm gonna have to re-pummel. So like if he's able to underhook me here a little bit, the only way that I can think about re-pummeling here is letting go of this and making this space bigger. He's gonna have more control of my arm. He can start to attack the arm lock, get the underhook deeper. So that's the thing where I think you don't run into problems with the belt. Like when I'm here, I can really lock this up nice and tight and it makes it tough. And I always wanna try to like use this mechanic with my hook and swing John this way to try to get him to base his hands on the mat. Whenever his hands are on the mat, and this concept stays true in all of the, the different half guards you're gonna be working on, that he can't attack me, he can't come over me, he can't underhook me, he can't choke me. So the more you can get him to actively post, the better it's gonna be for me, okay? Now, what I wanna to try to do ideally from here is I always use the deep half guard to try to set up the reverse half guard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my right arm here and I'm gonna do like a little shoulder shrug here and I'm gonna like kinda of tuck my head like a turtle and as I swing, I'm gonna go swing and I pop out the back door. So what I'm waiting for here is as John starts to turn back towards me to grab my head, I can either start to try to chase the back here or even if I don't get that, if he's able to get all the way around here and he grabs me by the head, like this with the sand here, yeah. Yeah. This is very important. When we're here, I really want to think in the reverse half guard, I never want to do this because if John's able to grab my legs and pull them towards me, I'm going to get my guard pass super easy. It doesn't matter how good I am at the leg work or with the upper body, he's going to have me like almost in a smash pass, you know? So just making sure like, I, people say triangle, but I don't think triangle is a great way to say it because if you come over here, if you can see this space here, it's very easy and I'm having a hard time to control his leg because there's a lot of space in there. So look, I like lock my legs this way and I plant my left foot. And now look, I'm gonna rotate my hips a little bit. This is gonna create like 90 degrees on the knee and it's gonna be very similar like to the knee twist pressure that we talked about at the very start of the video. Um, so this is gonna be much better to control and my leg is really far away from John. So he's really gonna have to like get up and over to my leg to start to uh, um, try to uh, bring my legs over this mm -hmm. way and it makes it hard for him to control my pants. Anytime he can't control my pants, it's gonna be really easy for me to do like any of the reverse half guard sweeps, especially the easy ones like the, the uh, reverse elevator sweep. Um, one thing that you can do if you wanna to start to get good at that is just really practice the footwork. So in the half guard, in any situation, whenever we have a hook, we have a cover on top. I can't just do this because he can just step out of the move. So, you know, just getting in the habit of just like going one, two, and just windshield wiper in those legs here, one, two. And then I can work into bringing this foot to the ground because my power is gonna come from the ground. If I try to kick John like this, I don't have any jam on that hook, you know? But once I go one, two, yeah. one, two. And then finish it once. So you can see. One, two, and all the way across. Um, so I'd say those are the three basic positions that I attack from, uh, from the half guard. I'll show one last thing, which is really important because you're gonna deal with the knee cut a lot. Uh, it's just gonna be a position that you're gonna have to have a lot of like savviness you're gonna encounter all the time playing half guard. So if I'm here with John, 
and he's settled into a good knee cut. A lot of people say, oh, I just need to try to bump him forward. Well, the thing is, is if John has a hold of my collar here with his hand, he's got his butt settled down here, and I'm, and I'm in this spot here. If I try to bump um, John over this way, he's going to plant this hand on the ground here. Yep, yeah, you can post his hand on the ground for a second. And it hasn't changed anything. He's got great base in this corner. I haven't exposed his back at all. I used energy. I wasted a movement. He's going to come back, and we're going to be back in the same position where he's going to be able to reset and attack me with something different. So... If you're trying to get the guy's hands on the ground so that you can force the knee twist, the deep half guard, the reverse half guard, a little drill that you can do too is think about bumping him over this side instead. So don't be so worried about opening your legs up. I try to keep like my quad like right across the back of his butt. And then look, I'm going to try to bump him over in this corner so he'll let go of the lapel and post his hand. Now this gives me access to everything that I need. I can easily go to the knee twist. I can easily swing in, open this up and go to the reverse half guard, okay? So I hope those three or four positions will work really good. Those are kind of some of the basic concepts that I use from the positions that I attack from the half guard. Yeah, guys, so one other big thing about the half guard I noticed as well is uh, when you sweep with half guard, often you don't just get the sweep, you come up into a very dominant passing position because when you do the sweep, just do one real quick to show, I do the reverse half one, uh -huh. you right? So like when we're in here, Right, for example, if he was to sweep me from here, it's not just a normal sweep. He's already completely past me in the position, right? Uh, and this is something I've seen a lot of competitors uh, successfully use uh, uh, successfully use as a way where if the guy is really hard to pass his guard, even if you get swept, if you can sweep him and then when you come up on top, you turn it straight into a guard pass and then to mount, it's a good way to bypass a guy who has an amazing guard. All right, guys, so I hope you like the content. If you like the channel, uh, like, share, subscribe, and check out Jake McKenzie on Instagram at... Uh, Jake McKenzie at Instagram. Jake McKenzie at Instagram. There we go. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Thank you.